Good afternoon and uh, Anyohaseo. My name is Kiyoshi Takasuna. Uh, I have been in charge of drug safety for about 40 years. Today, it's my great pleasure to be here and uh, <clears throat> make a presentation. We accelerate safety platform. As mentioned in my introduction, safety related drug attrition is still a major hurdle in the drug development. Therefore, a new approach that can uh, overestimate this situation has been more important. So to identify on and off target safety risk and the risk the toxicity at an early drug discovery phase, uh, an integrated safety assessment is an essential part of a successful drug development. Today, I will introduce our unique in vitro safety assessment solution and risk mitigation strategy. The first hurdle is to address the IND. For, for that, we need to get a candidate that can pass the GLP guideline test. In contrast, during hit to lead optimization or candidate selection, the best approach to get safer candidate with cost and time effective strategy. On this point, we have no correct answer. That means that we need tailor-made safety assessment strategy customized for each your project. This slide shows uh, our safety assessment capability, uh, which classify in the following four fields. First one is general toxicity, that is on and off target uh, toxicity, mainly organ tox. General toxicity is a killer tox we should avoid. Safety pharmacology, that is a mainly QT prolongation risk and lethal arrhythmogenic PDP signal. As a miscellaneous, not only phototoxicity, but also uh, specific, specific toxicity for a new modality. From this slide, I would like to the each uh, tox platform briefly. The general toxicity that might appear in the repeated dose tox or uh, clinical. Clinical. You, uh, this uh, in in that means this general toxicity is uh, very important and very difficult to uh, assess its safety safety uh, potential. So far, so many platforms have been proposed, but still no cross-compatible assay exists. In this field, we can offer on-target safety assessment and uh, as a wet assay, site toxicity and phospholipidose and promiscuous aid panel. Target safety assessment is knowledge-based virtual screening, which give us an effective safety mitigation strategy. This TSA suggests potential unintended adverse effect on target modulation and give us safety solution approach. Namely, we do not propose an uniform safety screen, but knowledge-based customized safety screening for you. The TSA include, for example, appropriate animal species that is uh, best for coming in vivo studies and organ toxicity and functional adverse effect that should be careful and effective safety screening and so on. Very informative assessment. Site toxicity has been related to not only acute toxicity, but also organ toxicity after repeated dose study. 
and we can offer the following two uh, cytopathicity assay. First one is uh, using HEP G2 cell line condition to glucose and galactose. In the HEP G cell line condition to galactose, we can detect the uh, uh, mitochondrial uh, toxicity as compared with uh, HEP G2 condition to glucose. Another cytopathicity assay is the flux analyzer assay, in which we can predict mitochondrial toxicity with higher sensitivity. The Premiscus 8 panel, compounds that promiscuity bind to multiple targets are likely to cause unexpected adverse effects. A large scale panel, for example, 40 to 100 targets is often used, but it is costly and time consu consuming at an early stage. Our small eight panel was selected from diverse gene family, for example, from Kinase, Lokwan, from nuclear receptor, glucocorticoid, and the PIPA gamma from GPCR, serotonin 2B, adenosine A3, A3, so on. So this small panel can evaluate the interaction with a wide range of target. If you compound interact with two or more target, it means this compound would cause some toxicity in the in vivo study. Next is genotoxicity. As you know, genotoxicity is a uh, killer toxicity. And it is clear what should we evaluate, namely mutagenic and chromosome aberration potential. Therefore, it is very important to examine this potential at an early stage. But genotoxicity has been not conducted, uh, especially at an early stage because maybe the relatively large amount of compound required and uh, relatively, through, relatively low, lower throughput. To solve this point, we accelerate uh, the following assays, micro -AMS and microflow assay. The compound affects directly DNA as mutagen or affect uh, indirectly chromosome function with many possible uh, mechanisms, which result in the micronucleus interaction. Both genotoxicity is related to carcinogenicity and the next generation development for, uh, uh, toxicity. This slide shows uh, representative in vitro and the in vivo genotox testing. We actually offer the AIMS assay using bacterial strain and micronucleus induction using human lymphoid uh, TK6 cycle and UMU test. This is our unique AIMS test, MicroAIMS using two, strain, two bacterial strain TA100 and TA98, and downside by using 24 well plate, which can reduce the uh, uh, required amount of compound to six milligrams. The validation studies using representative regent shows a good accuracy, namely 100%. Another validation study using internal synthesized compound also shows 100 accuracy. It's very nice platformizing. Microflow is a high throughput micronucleus induction assay using TK6 cell line. This is a representative cytometry figure. As you can see, positive control mitomycin induced micronucleus in this area. 
validation studies showed uh, uh, good accuracy, not only clastogen, but also both anogenic and clastogenic compound and anogen potential. The accuracy is 100%. This is also we actually the unique uh, assay. This is mode of action analyzed assay, which can differentiate, differentiate uh, its mechanism of show, uh, micronucleus induction, clastogen or anugen, using in vitro multiple DNA damage kit by measuring gamma X, phosphohistone A3, P53, and polyploidy. And you can see clastogen preferentially affects gamma X without no effect on this compound. And anugen affects phosphohistone A3 preferentially. This is another example of clastogen and anugen. Clastogen uh, affects gamma X and P53. In contrast, anugen no, uh, does not affect this index, but also affect polyploidity and phosphohistone H3. So using March flow assay, we can differentiate the compound clastogen or anugen. Next is safety pharmacology. Originally, we need to evaluate not only QT prolongation risk, but also CNS, respiratory, and CV function. However, currently, only QT risk assessment has been focused. Since 1997, five assay and telemetry assay has been highly successful in preventing the release of the potential torsogenic compound. However, now this centric hub assay is not adequate for QT risk assessment. At 2009, I make a presentation at the Conference of Korean Society of Applied Pharmacology in the following title. At that time, we, I made an alert currently used above my biomarker, namely HAG assay, and another in vivo, in ex vivo assay are not fully predicted, and urgent need for other biomarker and assay. Since then, about 13 years past, S7B guideline finally revised. And now, cardiac multion channel assay and phenotype, phenotypic assay using human IPS cardiomyocyte is recommended. This slide shows our cardiac multion channel assays on hard. NAB 1.5 peak and light and CAB 1.2. The blue character means the feature of our assay. Frozen stock means we can assess the current on that day after cell sowing. Namely, we don't need to await the culture for a few days. Namely, ready to use assay. The first protocol used is the SIPA protocol. And only for hard assay, uh, we uh, can ap ap uh, apply the uh, drugs cumulatively. So hard assay throughput is high throughput. It means about uh, 200 compounds per day, we can assess the hard assay. In contrast, not so high for NAB 1.5 or CAB 1.2. However, about 30 compounds per day we can assess. From this slide, I would like to show the example that, is, that shows the usefulness of this cardiac multi channel screening and phenotypic assay. 
This slide shows the hard IC50 value on CEPA28 test compound, which are categorized high to low risk. As you can see, only hard assay cannot differentiate the QT risk accurately of this compound. The safety margin, that means the ratio hard IC50 to the therapeutic free plasma concentration is more than 30 times has been used as a one criteria of QT risk assessment. However, you can see that is not enough. For example, some false negative, some false positive compound were seen. That is not perfect. In contrast, the more single analyzed multi-on channel effect, namely mice assay, shows a much better QT production, production. This mice means a ratio hard IC50 to the CAB 1.2 IC50 or NAB 1.5 rate IC50. As you can see, this parameter, this mice parameter is much better for QT prolong prolongation than safety margin. This slide shows the QT prolongation and arithmogenic signal EAD at high IC50 concentration. As you can see, QT high risk to inter QT intermediate risk compound markedly prolongs the QT interval with torsadogenic, namely arithmogenic potential EAD. In contrast, QT low risk compound has never affected the QT, rather shortening and without uh, EAD. So this phenotypic assay using human iPS cardiomyocyte can directly predict QT prolongation and arithmogenic potential. So informative and useful assay, I think. As a miscellaneous advice, I would like to show you the phototox and the specific toxicology of the new modality. Phototoxicity. We do not necessarily uh, avoid the phototoxicity. Indeed, many compounds with phototoxicity are on the market. However, no phototox uh, better than nothing. If your compound absorbs visible light, it means a retinoid toxicity, which, uh, which is too uh, difficult to uh, assess its physiological significance. In that case, we must uh, discard that uh, compound. So you have better at least UV with absorption spectra at early stage. And we actually offer UV with absorption spectral loss assay and NRU neutral rate uptake using 3T3 in vitro photoxicity assay can offer. For a new modality, we can offer highly efficient culture and droplet digital PCR assay for tumor genesis of cell therapy product. And for orion nucleotide therapy, we can offer high through cytotoxicity assay using HEP G2 or HEP RG using an index APP or CASPAR. And also we can offer new assay, cytokine assay using PBMC. This slide shows the summary of our integrated in vitro safety assessment. Each assay can be conducted uh, so, slight, uh, so small amount of compound required from less than 0.2 milligram and the maximum six milligram. 
we can offer this kind of integrate assessment. And also we can return the result within five to 14 days. It's very shorter turn around time. This slide is the last one. So recently, so safety assessment during hit to lead optimization is very important, more important in decreasing the drug attrition and accelerate drug development speed. We actually can propose idea safety assessment strategy, mechanism-based assay, cost time effective solution customized for you with high quality and fast turnaround time. So please let's do the drug discovery picture on this white canvas with you and support your innovative dis drug discovery. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any comment or question, please do not hesitate to contact us. That is all my presentation.